Hi. Today I want to talk about lesser evilism and how we got here. Biden or Trump, how did the USA get to where they are now? I'll tell you how. Instead of the whole of the USA and including the whole of the UK, the whole of the world, in fact, because we can see that the USA have total control over the world, even through the International Courts of Justice in its ability to veto any laws that it puts through. Instead of that, people, all of us throughout the globe, need to get a crowdfunding thing going to get so the USA can put forward a socialist option um, which can't be Bernie Sanders because he's clearly gone over to the dark side and so it would have to be a different candidate of the USA allowing um, which who have allowed their option to get to be just a choice at this duopoly choice and it, it started really and got worst of all, I think, and people started really taking notice of this when the option was between Hillary Clinton, of whom the Clintons stand for war with Russia and China and global escalation, or Trump, a man who at the time was shaking the hand of Putin and seemed to stand for, um, for anti-war to avoid war. The USA chose the lesser evil, which was Trump. At the next election, the option was Trump or the lesser evil Biden. They chose Biden. Now they have Biden or Trump. So now we've moved on. And those wars in the USA that they're funding, um, which is out of which out of these two is the lesser evil. If you keep voting for the lesser evil, if you keep accepting the duopoly, you will get evil still, but the evil gets worse with each election. So something has to change. And the only way to do that is for the people to start fighting against it. And the next candidate will either be equal or worse than the one before. Lesser evilism got the USA Trump and now they can't get rid of him. And the same is happening in the UK unless you wake the fuck up now and start doing something about it now. Unless we start putting the money, even if it's a pound, every single person putting a pound in and effort and everything that we can in raising awareness for the independent candidates across the country and as well as George Galloway's Workers' Party and fight to unseat Starmer at Holborn and St Pancras through the OSHA um, group that we're all part of through funding unity and spreading awareness we will never ever be able to change the landscape of British politics if we don't do this now everyone should know and be educated about the escalation dominance theory we're witnessing it with the conflict in Gaza escalation dominance theory is the escalation of conflict in ways that will be disadvantageous or costly to the adversary. I think Israel and the world has underestimated the strength of Hamas. With Iran joining the conflict, the escalation of this will only take this conflict to perilous states, which could end up as World War III, and of course the question of the use of nuclear weapons. Are we heading towards Armageddon? Because our leaders would not stop arming Israel regardless of the fact that we know that it is against international law. When asked about the arming of Israel, both Sunak and David Cameron have both said the same thing, which shows this is a strategy that they have agreed on. Instead of answering the direct question, they say, why don't you ask others why they have, haven't stopped ar arming Israel? Whatever happened to us being world, a world leading country? Nowadays, we're nothing but sheep following the rest. Any of you out there who support a war, do you think about what would happen should this escalate? How would you feel if they are sending your children, or if you're young enough, you to kill those your government tell you you must fight against? Even if you've marched in support of these people, Think about who your children would be fighting alongside. The IDF, the same people who have been raping women and children. 
At this point, will you be fine with this or will you, at that point, check into the facts and start shouting about how you do not want your children anywhere near these monsters? By this time, it will be way too late. Whether you believe in their view or who is good and who is bad, you will be made to fight a side that this is, and this is what they call patriotism. If you refuse, they will send you white feathers and label you just as they did in World War II. This is how they control you, branding you with names just as they have with the weaponization of anti-Semitism. You don't at that point get a say in who you think your enemies are. You're told who they are. You will be told who your friends and allies are at this point too. You will be expected to kill other human beings who you've never met. People who most likely did so much good in the world before this. People with hopes and dreams and talents you'll be made to murder in cold blood. Just before slavery was abolished, just like with Hamas, whose, those slaves sacrificed their own lives to free others, many innocent people died then too, just as when Hamas broke free to gather hostages. Even if it was never intentional, people died. And as we know, Israel killed very many of their own in on October the 7th too, especially when they triggered the Hannibal Directive. Then everything that moved was shot and killed by Israel. Anyone saying that Hamas was raping women at that point must view them as superhumans. They were being fired at from the air. A Save the Children report in July 2023 showed that even prior to October the 7th, Palestinian children arrested by Israeli forces faced immense emotional and psychological abuse, with four out of five, 86% of them being beaten and 69% strip searched. So what do you think you would do if one of these were your children? I know that I would become a terrorist. Last November saw three exchanges of prisoners from Israeli jails with a total of 112 hostages released so far, including 78 Israeli. Palestinian women and children swapped in exchange. Many have been tortured and raped by Israelis. The whole story has been twisted to make the Israelis appear the good guys and amass the monsters. It's clear that on those days, hostages were taken to exchange for the thousands of children in those Israeli jails and to end the occupation by shedding light upon the Palestinians and what they've endured over the years of the Israeli occupation. We know the occupation of Palestine, Palestine has been brutal and wrong, just as we know slavery was wrong and as we know eventually the fight back of the slaves ended up with the abolition of slavery. And this is why they just decided to take, to give their lives to making this change and making this difference. These people, I would call them heroes. Just as we know, this will end in at the end of, an, of the occupation one way or another. During the time when slavery was legal, the dominant country were the owners of the slaves. When the slaves broke free, the country created a war on the slaves and the others joined in to help to fight against slavery. And we're at this point where war will get bloodier and where more are joining. And the question is, what side would you be on? The oppressed or the oppressor? The slaves or the slave drivers? That's it from me today. Thank you for listening to me. You know, I love you all. Thank you. Love you. Bye.